Determining mole ratios for stoichiometry. Whenever we do a stoichiometry problem, we need to begin with the balanced chemical equation. In this case, we're going to use the synthesis of ammonia. Nitrogen, N2, plus hydrogen, H2, yields ammonia, NH3. In balancing this equation, we end up with one molecule of nitrogen gas for three molecules of hydrogen gas, giving us two, mol two molecules of ammonia, NH3. The balanced chemical equation provides a comparison of the ratio of the molecules necessary to complete the reaction. In this case, it takes one molecule of nitrogen, N2, to react with three molecules of hydrogen, H2, in order to produce two molecules of ammonia. The coefficients for this balanced chemical equation are nitrogen has a 1, even though the 1 is not present. Coefficients for hydrogen are 3, and ammonia, 2. Therefore, it is the coefficients that provide the molecular information for this chemical reaction. Continuing with this same balanced chemical equation of N2 plus 3H2 yields 2NH3, this balanced chemical equation also provides a comparison of the moles necessary to complete this reaction. So therefore, it takes one mole of nitrogen, N2, to react with three moles of hydrogen, H2, in order to produce two moles of ammonia. Again, it is the coefficients, one in front of the N2, three in front of the H2, and two in front of the NH3 that provides this information. The coefficients provide the molar information for this chemical reaction. So to determine the mole ratio, we compare the coefficients of each substance in the equation. I'm going to label nitrogen as substance A, hydrogen as substance B, and ammonia as substance C. And we're going to compare it in the following ways. If I compare A to B, I'm comparing nitrogen to hydrogen. This gives me a ratio of 1 to 3. And this gives me a mole fraction of 1 mole of nitrogen for every 3 moles of hydrogen. Likewise, if I compare B to A, hydrogen is now being compared to nitrogen. My mole ratio is now 3 to 1. And this gives me a mole fraction of 3 moles of hydrogen for every 1 mole of nitrogen. When I compare A to C, I am comparing N2 to NH3, nitrogen to ammonia, giving me a mole ratio of 1 to 2, and therefore my mole fraction is now 1 mole of nitrogen for every 2 moles of ammonia. When in turn I compare C to A, I now compare ammonia to nitrogen, my mole ratio is now 2 to 1, and this gives me a mole fraction of 2 moles of ammonia for every 1 mole of nitrogen. Continuing on, I can also compare B to C, thereby comparing hydrogen to ammonia. The ratio here is 3 to 2, and my mole fraction is 2 moles of hydrogen for every, sorry, 3 moles of hydrogen for every 2 moles of ammonia. And the last comparison is comparing C to B. This gives me ammonia compared to hydrogen. The ratio is 2 to 3 and my mole fraction comes out as 2 moles of ammonia for every 3 moles of hydrogen. If we have a combustion reaction, such as propane C3H8 plus oxygen yields CO2, carbon dioxide, and water, again, we label them to make this simple, A for propane, B for oxygen, C for carbon dioxide, and D for water. Again, I can compare each of the following using their coefficients. When I compare A to B, I'm comparing propane to oxygen at a ratio of 1 to 5. This gives me a mole fraction of 1 mole of propane for every 5 moles of oxygen. Comparing B to A, I'm comparing oxygen to propane. Therefore, my ratio reverses and is now 5 to 1, and my mole fraction is 5 moles of oxygen for 1 mole of propane. A to C compares propane to carbon dioxide. My ratio here is 1 to 3, and my mole fraction is 1 mole of propane for every 3 moles of CO2. C to A is now comparing carbon dioxide to propane, giving me a ratio of 3 to 1, and therefore my mole fraction comes out as 3 moles of CO2 for every 1 mole of propane. When we compare B to C, we are comparing oxygen to CO2. This ratio is 5 to 3, 
giving us a mole fraction of 5 moles of oxygen for every 3 moles of CO2. And, can, and when I compare C to B, I compare carbon dioxide to oxygen at a ratio of 3 to 5, my mole fraction being 3 moles of CO2 for every 5 moles of oxygen. You can continue this with C to D and D to C, B to D and D to B as well, but you get the point. What we are doing is comparing the ratio of the coefficients of each of the molecules involved in the chemical reaction.